Fundamentals. Everybody loves talking all about fundamentals. You got your debt, your margins, your book value. Psh, fundamentals. Now, nah, I mean, all those things are important, but they are not nearly as important as the key mad daddy of fundamentals. And you know which fundamental I'm talking about? I'm talking about liquidity, the supreme fundamental. Yes, this video, we are finally gonna talk about liquidity. I know you guys asked for it forever ago and I said I was gonna do it and then I didn't do it, but now I'm doing it, I'm doing it right now. So let's just jump into it. And who is our guy that we love to go to when it comes to macro? Of course, it's Alex and Macrops once again. He has a great article, what market liquidity is and why it's the most important fundamental. And if you end up reading this article, and wonder why the editing is just so so good on it because that's that was me yes but okay he says if there's one central or primary rule on which all fundamentals are based it is market liquidity it's the most important thing and you know we're always talking about liquidity on every single market review we do you can see the latest one by clicking this playlist right here liquidity is the mag daddy and unsurprisingly big daddy dalio loves talking about it too but it is the mag daddy of fundamental inputs and not surprisingly it's the least known and understood so here Here's Druck, the legend, Stan Druck and Miller, on the importance of liquidity. Earnings don't move the overall market. It's the Federal Reserve Board. Focus on the central banks and focus on the movement of liquidity. Most people in the market are looking for earnings and conventional measures. Psh, fundamentals. But it's liquidity that moves markets. So liquidity is basically just demand. It's the willingness of consumers to purchase goods and other assets. And demand is driven by the tightening and easing of credit. Simple concept, we've talked about it before. If people have more money in their pockets, they're gonna spend more. You can directly affect demand by giving people more money to an extent. So what we think of as money is actually comprised of both hard cash and credit. Credit being the most important part because the amount of hard cash in the system is relatively stable, but credit is extremely elastic. And that's because it could be created by anybody, any two willing parties. If I say, okay, I'll buy this sandwich for you, but you better pay me back. Credit creation right there. It's this flexibility that makes it the main factor in driving liquidity and demand. And actually the majority of credit, it's created outside the traditional banking sector and government. Because most of this credit, like the example I just gave you, is created just between businesses and customers. So when businesses purchase wholesale supplies on credit, money is created. When you open a Best Buy credit card to buy that new TV, money is created. Or when you purchase stocks on margin from your broker, money is created once again. So if people are lending people money, that is money being created the entire time. I mow your lawn, you pay me back later. Oh, so if there's more liquidity and credit in the system, then there's going to be more demand, which in turn pushes markets higher. So what are the largest levers that affect the amount of credit, money, and liquidity in the system? Interest rates. That's what really affects everything. And interest rates are set by both the central banks and the private market. Now the primary rate, the rate that the central banks control, like the Fed, that is the largest factor in determining the cost of money. And as we said, the cost of money determines liquidity and demand in the system. And if you want to know how the Fed controls interest rates, then definitely watch this playlist right here. It's a set of videos that are super corny. I'm sorry. They're okay. But they have solid, solid information in them. They were some of the first videos I ever made. Go watch them. You'll understand what I'm talking about here a lot better. So when the cost of money is low, as in low interest rates, more demand is created in two ways. First, it makes sense to exchange lower yielding assets for riskier, higher yielding ones. And that's because say if the return on putting your money in the bank or safe investments like bonds, if those are low because the Fed decreased interest rates, well then you're gonna wanna put your money into something that's gonna give you a higher return, right? Which is why you'll end up putting your money in stocks or investing it somewhere because that's where you're gonna get that higher return. That is fueling demand, it's pushing you to do something. And it creates demand because more people are willing to borrow and spend, which is how money is created, right? Because credit is cheaper. If interest rates are low, you can borrow as much money as you want. How do you think Netflix became a thing? Low interest rate environment. And it also leads to a bunch of excess, but you know, that's for a different video. So this affects the stock market in two ways. First, share prices rise because investors trade up to riskier assets. Cause like I explained, they're looking for that return, right? And companies total sales increase because of higher consumer demand. People are buying more cause they got more money in their pocket. And they got more money in their pocket cause they could borrow more cause of the cheaper credit. So liquidity ends up affecting both the denominator, which are earnings for companies, and 
the numerator, which is price per share, in stock valuations as it drives the markets higher. So if you think about the equation of earnings per share, share price is going up, earnings are going up. So the stock market keep going up while the valuations, you know, stay reasonable. So of course the question becomes, okay, if central banks can just lower interest rates and stimulate, then won't markets just go on forever as long as rates stay low? No, they can't. Because even though central banks are the largest influence on demand and the cost of money, they are not the only influence. The private sector assigns its own rates based off the central bank, but it also includes an additional premium or spread that fluctuates according to the credit risk they see in the market. So this next example, take into account that this thing was written two years ago in 2017. So in this example, the Fed funds rate was near zero over the last two years, but interest rates on high yield loans, which is the primary lending market to the energy sector, they ballooned during that oil collapse because there is increased perceived risk. So the Fed isn't setting the price of all lending. The private market still has a lot to do with it. So money tightened and became more expensive as liquidity became constrained in that sector. And that's what causes markets to fall, regardless of whether the primary rate, which is what the Fed sets, is low or not. If things are bad enough, people don't want to lend to each other. And that's going to cause the downturn, no matter how much the Fed is trying to stimulate. So liquidity affects everything. It's what affects the big, huge market narratives and moves. So the 2008 financial crisis occurred because central banks cranked up the liquidity to jumpstart the economy after the 2000 tech bust. Because things were bad in 2000, right? So stimulate to make it all better. But all this extra money just got dumped into housing. That's how the whole real estate flipping thing started happening. And eventually the bubble formed, which popped as liquidity finally dried up. And now, after the 2008 huge debacle, central banks are stimulating even more. And when they're stimulating like this, you could expect the bulls to keep running. It's liquidity that moves markets, just like Druck said. So that's why, like I said, we track liquidity closely in all those market review videos, which I link to right here. When we see liquidity turning, that's when you can expect the market to stop running. And it's a mix of the central bank setting rates, it's the private markets, we look at high yield rates. We look at a number of other things too. But if you would like to continue tracking liquidity with us, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you get an email notification whenever those videos come out. It's important to know whether the bear is coming, right? So I make those videos all the time. But yes, subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Stay foul out there. Bye.